Welcome to WAVE, Channel 20, Auburn Community Television, in this episode of Meet the Artist. Meet the Artist is supported by the North Auburn Artists to introduce artists in our local communities. I'm Lucinda Laughlin, your host. Today, our guest local artist is Susan Tonkin Regal. Susan works in multimedia using a collage process. And it's really, really interesting. And as you can tell from our wall, we have a lot to talk about. Susan, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. Thank you. Well, let's start with the collage process. So you can kind of just generally explain what that is. And then we can kind of go in the different ways that you use that process. OK. Collage is the easiest way to explain it is it's a part. So there are parts of different things that are made into a whole. And that's really the simplest way to explain it. Now when you are it, you're taking all these parts and you're putting them on something, mm -hmm. and I know that you do use some wood and some as paper, is there a process you use to adhere these to that board? Pretty much glue. Okay. There's different types of glue for different types of materials. But usually it's glue. Sometimes it's sewing. It's thread. Oh, interesting. Yes. And then I know another area that you use is encaustics. Right. And if you could, I think there's one of, a couple of encaustics here that you've done. Mm -hmm. And one of them that I, I do love is the taxi cab, mm -hmm. which is over your shoulder and above you. Mm -hmm. um, and it, please explain the encaustic process because I know a lot of people probably don't understand what encaustics are right. and then also then what how you came about taxicab how did taxicab get there yes encaustic is an old ancient art of applying hot wax to any substrate you can put it on wood paper cardboard fabric uh, I use it on wood a lot um, and it's basically just heating up wax. I use a lot of different colors. And then taking a brush and applying it when it's hot on the wood. And then you actually use a heat gun to seal it, each layer, because it, it's a layering process. Now, how do you get the different colors, then? Is that coming from the wax itself, or is it something else that you're applying? Good question. A lot of times I'll use, I have beautiful colors. They come in a little, like almost like a shape of a butter, mm -hmm. um, cube of butter. So I use a lot of the colors just like that because they're beautiful, but I mix them too. And what I use is baking pans. So you can cut off, usually what I do if I need to cut them is I'll put a little bit in a paper bag and then throw it on the floor with a hammer so I can chip off a little bit. Mm -hmm and then I'll put that in one baking pan or in a little part of one and then I'll take another color and then they'll mix together. So. And then when does that get introduced to the wax? Well that is the wax. That is the that wax. Is the wax. Oh, got you. All it's right. the wax is like the little butter cube. Oh, is it? It's actually okay. encaustic but you can use and mix it with beeswax which mm -hmm. is the kind of like the neutral wax. It's clear. So with particularly like this one, it's I assume it's multiple layers that you're then applying to the wood. Right. There are multiple layers. And the fun thing about encaustic is that you can, it's a push and pull process where you can apply it and then take it off. Mm -hmm. The way you take it off is you'll use the heat gun and go back down to the wood, just disperse the paint and, or the encaustic, and then you'll take a, some kind of a scraping tool and just scrape it off so you can have areas where there's bare wood or you can get rid of anything you don't like. So it's like an eraser. So once you've gone through this and you've kind of set the colors that you have within it, um, then it looks like you've done some carvings and stuff in this particular piece. Right, and that's called scraffito, where you take a tool and it's an old, old art modality where you scrape into anything. You can scrape into paint, scrape into wood, but I'm scraping into the wax. Mm -hmm. So you can do a lot with it. You can scrape into the wax and then you can actually, in those grooves that you've scraped, you can apply 
other wax into that so you can get another another effect. There's a lot you can do. Now you have another example of the encaustic which is just right over my shoulder. Um, what is this one called? That one is called Hands On. And how did you come up with this name of Hands On? Um, you see the hands? Mm -hmm. There are hands in the little window and it just when I title my work whatever comes. It just, it's a real spontaneous process. Now is encaustic, using encaustics, is that something you've done fairly recent or is it something you've always done? Um... Actually I have done it off and on through the years for about 10 years. I fell in love with it when I saw a show and I asked the artist if she would teach me and she did. She, she did a workshop at my house and then I've been doing it I usually do it more in the winter or the spring because you need great ventilation. Okay. So you, you want a lot of air and you want a fan. So what is it that is, seems to be needs that ventilation? What, what Just the wax. Just the wax yeah. itself. Right. Well this is really interesting. I love the colors that you've achieved Thank with you. it. Um, now you started out that you're mixed media. Right. And so let's talk about some of the examples you have of the mixed media. Um, and two of them, I believe, are let's see, these two here. And why don't you first explain this process? Because the thing that I, amazes me is the number of mediums that you actually use. And so let's start by first on the top one. Uh, and what is this one called? That one is yellow is the color of my daughter's hair. And I love which that. Which it is. She's yeah. a blonde. Yes. And so tell me first just the number of mediums that you've used in here um, because, you know, it looks like you've got some acrylic that's going on. Yeah, the, the acrylic is the base okay. and I sometimes use it thickly, sometimes I water it down. Um, so that's the first thing I usually apply. And then I actually do mono printing little fragments and so I'll take little images. Most of them are the black images, but mm -hmm. the, cat, the uh, sheep is blue. And so then I will decide what shapes or what images I want and cut those or rip them. And I glue them on with my favorite glue, tacky glue. I was just going to ask, then how do you glue them on? And with why is it that you like tacky glue? You know, it's just my favorite because it glues wood, it glues fabric, it glues paper, and it's very durable. So you then apply that onto the back of whatever you're putting on? Right, right. Now, it looks like we have, is it a, a cow or is it? A, it was a sheep, a sheep, kind of a okay. sheep cow. <laughs> and because it's about your daughter, are these things that she's interested in? Is that what you're depicting no, here? No, actually I did this when I was in Norway last summer. And it the face just turned out with yellow hair because I, of the color and I thought, I thought of Allie, my daughter. Mm -hmm. So that's what got the title and, and it has nothing, although she would love all the things in it and she would have loved being there, but mm -hmm. that's what it was from. Now what are some of the other elements that we're showing in this one? Is, do you have any, like you indicated you sometimes you use thread. Yes, on the shoulder there's thread um, and also the little red figure has red embroidery thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and on the bottom, there's thread. I, I see the thread that it. goes yeah. along. Now, are these on paper or a it's, canvas? It's on BFK Reeves archival paper. It's very good quality paper. Now, would these normally then be framed in uh, behind glass, or are they? F yes. Framed? Okay. Yes, yes. I like to put the paper behind glass, and I float them just a tiny bit with a little tiny spacer. That's where you get still get that feeling of the texture right. too. I understand you also make your own frames. Well, I, I don't make the frames. What I do is put them together with my husband. Okay. We, we figured that out. But we, they're museum quality, mm -hmm. very, very simple maple frames. Well, it's absolutely these are beautiful, beautiful works. So and let's you. talk about the one then that comes below it. Again, is this starting out with acrylic? <clears throat> yes, it is. And I also uh, wanted to mention I use pastels that's at the very end, mm -hmm. more towards the end of the process, and also graphite. Now, show me where the pastels are. The pastels the are here, and um, on this one here, and actually, I think a little bit on those blue little uh, rectangular areas, and, and then the graphite is here and here. It's just basically pencil, but it's heavier pencil. 
And it looks like you might have some thread work, you said, in this Thread well. is here, and the black down there, and the black up here. I, I just love the way, like I said, you incorporate so many different types of mediums. That's what I really enjoy it's about fun. looking at your work and then trying to figure out what has she used in this particular one. Right, right. Now one of the things I think that it allows you to do this is that you have a very extensive background in all different types of art form. Yes, I have taught myself basically. I was trained in a pr pretty much traditional way of, I used oil paint when I was in college mm -hmm. and so I didn't learn a lot of these techniques till I was out of graduate school. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. And you, I'm still learning. You still, well, I think it always is an That's interesting right. process. And doesn't it make it easier now because you can go on the internet, you can see what other people are doing? Sure. I, I find that really intriguing. And one thing that I do since I teach workshops, I really learn from my students. They're my teachers. It's funny, I, I'm teaching something, but I'm learning a lot more than I'm teaching. It's, it's an interesting phenomenon. Well, I think that's what's always great about when you get with a group of people like that then. Yeah, yeah. Now, the next process that you do, which is really fascinating, which is the cardboard and plaster process. Mm -hmm. And let's first explain this process and what you use to start with and the layering that you do. Okay. Actually, there's a little story that I thought I would share. and. It was a day my husband was making some weather vanes and he had canvas that he was putting gesso on and he had a piece of brown paper. So he gessoed the front of the canvas and then he flipped it over and he gessoed that and then he pressed down on it and so the gesso got on the brown paper, the textures with his fingerprints and mm -hmm. kind of pressing it down. So he finished it and he said, I'm throwing this paper away. And I said, no, no, that's beautiful. And that's how these, this series began. I love the paper. So that became my background. And so then you're using plaster to build this. Yeah, plaster goes over the cardboard. OK. Right. And so and they're mostly in figures that you've used. Right. Well, you know, we don't have very much more time. It, time really does go fast, yeah. particularly when you have something as interesting as what you have. If you could tell us where you are on the Plaster Art Studio Tours, because I know people will really love to come by and see your work. I hope they do. Uh, we're on number 38, and we are Shady Lake Lane at the end, Red Barn Studios. And if you want to find out more about me, my website is www.susantonkinregal.com. And you're going to be sharing uh, this location with some other artists. Yes, yes. And one of them, I understand, is our next generation. Yes, she is, Blue Burke. Well, that's really exciting. Yeah, we're excited. I want to thank you very much for tuning in to. Uh, I want to thank you again for tuning in to Meet the Artist on Wave Channel 20, Auburn Community Television. It is wonderful pieces of work and working in this type of medium that we hope to share with you. And the Plaster Art Studio Tour is another event where you can actually meet the artist and see their work. I hope you will stop by Susan's studio and see more of her work and she can explain more because we certainly didn't have the time to give her, do her work justice. Thank you so much. Thank you.